Oh, okay. So here we are. Can't believe it's already winter. Felt like summer just yesterday. Not but the weather is turning. The leaves have turned orange here. I don't know how it is there on the East Coast, Dennis, but it's definitely gotten colder here. A lot of moisture. So it's fitting that during this winter time, the element is water and that we need to take care of our kidneys with the chill in the air coming, the shortening of days drastically, and um, just a kind of a low in energy. I don't know if you've been feeling it, but feeling a little bit more um, hunkered down in the house type of energy. And uh, it's really important as we also get less movement because we're kind of cozying up in the house that we also take care of the kidney zone, which is the lower back area and the organs that are in charge of the legs. So we're doing less walking, you know, less running, less moving about. And um, that's what winter is all about. So we're going to start by you know, this is the last movement of the four seasons four piece set, but we like to start with it as a warm up also. So it's large bear loosens the waist. We'll just take a nice start by our foundation. And sorry, I don't have a tripod today. So let's see if I can help the situation. How's that? There you go. It helps a little bit. Well, you're going to start by finding a nice firm stance, making sure that your legs are supporting your hip bones right under the pelvis. Draw a line from the hips down to the feet, feeling the bottoms contact with the floor. Fantastic. And we'll just take a moment to drop into the practice, breathing in, breathing out. Hmm. And I'll just sigh here as I arrive after a day, a full day. Then you're gonna take your hands, you can warm them up to begin with. I don't know if yours are cold or not, but warming the hands, we're gonna use our hands to place them over the kidneys. Create some friction, taking the mind there, which brings the energy there. And when the energy goes there, so the blood flow nice charge and then you can place them onto the zone i want to show you here right where the kidneys are close to the surface and i'll just stand at an angle to the camera we're going to start to um, move in a way that allows for that zone to experience expansion so the weight coming off the organs and then the natural weight of the body again allowing for compression of the zone so we talk a lot about especially in this set a lot about compression and opening of areas spaces and tissues around the organs of concern of focus for each particular season and that constitutes a massage, not only of the tissues around the organs, but of the organs themselves. So we're gonna really feel, you know, this space here where the kidneys reside. Can you feel that zone with a little bit more press, like a your body leaning massages and let's go. Right, and in, in a circular way, now you're massaging with your body, own body part, the kidney. So the side of the kidney, the top of the kidney, seeing if you can really just move in a way that creates a really nice massage for those organs. And of course, 
it's not always easy to feel our kidneys. That's not something that we grow up doing or in society take spend time. So first you might have to imagine the kidneys in this area and use your hands to really create that feeling of what's happening in that back area. So maybe you use the, how the fingers are spread, seeing if you can get the fingers to come closer together and move further apart with your movement. And that could give you an idea for what's happening to the tissue there. So I'm spreading my fingers apart. And when I lean towards those fingers, my fingers are coming together. So I imagine that the tissues where the kidneys are, are also compressing. And I can start to kind of feel into the body underneath my hand and see if I can sense that. Wow, I do a lot of sitting in my job, so I can already feel even this much movement is causing a lot of new type of compression and new type of expansion, a massage that I don't normally do on a daily basis. So of course, it's really great for me, but I don't wanna overdo it. Let's massage our kidneys. That was a bit of compression and expansion. And we'll cover this again at the end of the set once again. So you can kind of see how it feels now and how much awareness you have of that zone now, compare it to the next time we practice. And then let's bring that massage energy all the way down, down the sides of the legs, all the way down to the feet. I'm disappearing off the camera, but I'm sweeping all the way down to the feet. Again, taking your hands over the tops of the kidneys. And this time I'm gonna go straight back over the tailbone, over the sacrum, over the glutes, and all the way down the backs of the legs, all the way down to the feet. It should feel really nice. We'll do one more where we sweep down the front side, down over the crests of the hips, down the fronts of the legs, and down to the toes. Nice work. So we started with Bear. Welcome to those joining us. We've just started. We just did a warm up. Um, I don't know, somehow I lost Margaret, but that's okay. Hopefully she'll come back. So then we'll start with the actual first movement of the Four Seasons Winter Set for the kidneys, for kidney care. And that's two toes, oh shoot, <laughs> two hands touch the toes. And um, basically we'll be doing a forward fold, um, but we want to use the long back muscles to really compress those kidneys and do a very gentle massage in that one dimension. So we'll start with that and then we'll take twists to the side. Go ahead and find that firm foundation of the feet. Relax down, let everything go. See if you can find ultimate relaxation of all the tissues. Inhale, bringing the energy up. And then flipping the hands, exhale, pressing the hands to the sky. Really opening the palms here like a cat pressing its paws. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but my cat does that a lot. Inhale here and then begin to reach forward, folding at the hips, creating length, not losing that length. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen as you bend forward. And when you no longer can maintain that, go ahead and let your upper body droop down. And just hang out here. Really just take a moment and I'm, I'm gonna come out of it, but you guys stay down there. Really hang down so that the back muscles are laying down on top of the kidney. So those erector spinae muscles are now just compressing the top and with the gentle weight of its own mass is giving that kidney a nice compression. Keep on breathing because as you breathe against that compression, you're experiencing a different type of charge in the tissues. So breathing 
um, in the face of some compression is very different from breathing uh, with no resistance and an open, spacious feeling. So that'll that'll change up how the energy is moving. Keep on breathing, and then go ahead when you feel ready. Give a little bend to the legs. Bring the hips over the tops of the feet. And press into the floor and roll your way up. We'll do one more of those. Wonderful. Okay, one more time. We're gonna inhale, bring it all the way up. Exhale as you flip the hands, pressing into the sky. Inhale, fingers. Inhale, lengthen fingers, reach on forward, really lengthening through the head. Reaching forward, reaching forward in order to lengthen those muscles so that they can then relax fully over the top of the joints. Now just hang out there, breathing in and out. Now, if you've taken class with me before, you know, I like to say pedal the feet, which just means bending one leg and then bending the other while you're in this forward bend position that will help work out the hips, stretching each side one at a time and giving the other side a little bit of relaxation. That'll help you um, really make, get more relaxation um, in those tissues that need that. You know, that might not normally receive this much of a stretch. Great. All right, let's come on up again, bending the knees, inhaling, pressing into the floor, rolling up one vertebrae at a time over those stable legs. Beautiful. One more time. This time we'll take a twist at the bottom. Inhale, coming on up. Exhale, flipping the hands, pressing into the sky. Inhale, stretching the fingers as long as they can do it go. And exhale, maintaining that as we hinge at the hips, reaching forward. Fantastic, reaching forward, reaching forward, reaching forward. And go ahead and relax there. Remembering to continue to breathe in as you're in your forward bend. And then walking your fingertips over to the right side in that forward bend. So you're, now you're in a twist and just hang out in a twist there. Keep on breathing. You can go as far to the side as you want or not, depending on how it feels. Move slowly because when you move slowly, then your muscles can begin to take the time to let go. If you move too fast, you're not gonna create any new patterns. So then now walk over to the other side. Hang out here, really enjoy. Try to lengthen your breath, slow time down. You can slow time down by changing the pace of your breathing, really enjoying sipping the breath. And then coming back to center, bending those legs, bringing the hips over the tops of your feet and pressing down into the feet, rolling one vertebrae up at a time. Enjoying that beautiful, maybe a little shoulder roll at the top. Yeah, nice work. All right. How's that feeling for everyone? Nice. It feels really good for me too. All right. Um, let's see. As far as hands positions go, I don't know if you remember from last year. It's been a while since I've taught this set, but we were talking, uh, we talked last year about how the hands are positioned. Now, rotating the hands as if the hands were under the feet changes how the tissues are all the way up into the shoulder and all the way down into the back to the region just above the kidneys. And so it affects the whole position. And I think there's some brilliance in the fact that 
the full expression of the pose requires you to slip your hands underneath your feet. And I think it's precisely because of the rotation of the arms and how that affects the back, which affects the zone of the kidneys. So I want to add that in and make sure that we're getting that uh, benefit as well, even if you can't get your hands under your feet. So um, we're going to try that and make sure that we have that feeling that your hands are underneath the toes. And when I'm actually have my feet, so if this hand was my foot and the hands on the, on the, sorry, <laughs> if my foot, this hand, that's the foot is on my hand that's underneath it. When I'm in that position in a forward bend, I'm actually using my foot to massage my hand and I'm pulling on it in small ways. And that's affecting the tissue all the way up into my shoulder and all the way across my back and in the tissues that surround the kidney as well. So it's all related in probably the fascial anatomy train um, fashion. Any questions about that? Let's give it a shot if there's not. Okay, so when you're doing it in your mind, even if your hand's not under your foot, I guess this is where I was going with it, is that if you can manipulate your hand, your arm, as if you can feel the pressure of your foot on your hand and stretch through the hand's tissue down towards the ground, that could really add to the way that the tissues are pulling from your central body. Let's give that a shot. All right, here we go. So we're going to find our firm foundation again, always starting with our base, making sure that we're connected, making sure that we're stacked up, making sure that we're trusting and in good relationship with the ground below us. <sighs> uh, talking for me. Then we relax. Take a few breaths to just connect. We'll bend our legs. Gather. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, flipping the hands, pressing into the ceiling. Stretching the palms open. Inhaling then. Fingers to the ceiling. Exhale, hinging forward, reaching forward as far as we could go so that we create, maintain that length. And then exhaling, just relaxing down. Take a breath here to just find full relaxation. And then rotate the hands as if they're underneath your feet and really see if you can stretch the arms forward and down and see if that changes any sensation and keep on breathing relax the neck relax the head relax your ears relax everything you can and just Breathe there. Just see if you can go into a sleep-like dreamy state where everything slows down. Your tissues can then open and let go if you're not moving so fast. If you're moving fast and quick, your tissues tighten up because they have to be ready for the next thing you might do. If you move slowly, your tissues can slow down too and open and and not be so alert and alarmed and ready. I'll just take a moment to breathe there. And then when you feel ready, you bend your legs, push down into the earth to rise up, rolling one vertebrae at a time onto the tops of your hips. And take a nice little shoulder roll there. Feeling good? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I feel so relaxed now. 
All right, so we'll do the next movement now, moving on to Phoenix spreads its wings. So we're gonna take a nice um, wider stance. So what we call more of a horse stance and slightly wider than hip width to get a nice firm foundation. Phoenix spreads its wings. Oops. Phoenix spreads its wings, is going to go across the body so that now we're taking not only the forward compression of the kidneys with the back muscles, but now we're allowing for a twist from the side. So if you imagine my hands being the back muscles, when you bend over in a twisted formation, now the kidneys are getting pressed from the sides. So let's give that a shot. See if you can feel into that zone of the kidneys as you do it. So a relaxing exhale, inhale, bringing the hands up, opening like a phoenix, beautiful. Exhale, go ahead and squat down, kind of reaching across with that arm, placing it on the thigh of the opposite side. And here you want to keep your arm in alignment with your shoulders, like a wing. <laughs> Inhale, looking up at your wing. Exhale, let everything go. Let the arms come in front of you. And we'll breathe in, coming up, rolling the vertebrae up one at a time. Okay, I'm going to do a quick review before we go to the other side. When we go into Phoenix spreads wings, the shoulder, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand, they're all in a line, okay? And so when you go into the twist, the arm comes up as well. So you want this to stay in a single line and not break it, all right? So this would be the position, this not so much, this not so much. It's hard to know where your arm is in space when you're twisted up sometimes. But if you can keep on holding your wing and not change that in relationship to your body, you'll be on the right track, okay? We don't wanna kink up the shoulder. <laughs> it's good to see you, Margaret. It was hard to get here, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what was going on with the internet. All right, does that make sense? We want one line from shoulder to shoulder to elbow to the wrist in all positions, okay? Yeah, that one, yeah. You don't wanna go too far back. You just wanna hold it right out. It's hard to see with the camera angle sometimes. All right, let's give that a shot on the second side. Here we go. Nice firm foundation. We wanna make sure we feel stable in our stance. Breathing in and out, relaxing into the position. And on your next exhale, go ahead and relax the knees, coming into a small squat. Inhaling, bringing the arms up. And opening like a phoenix. Taking a breath here. Spread eagle. And then go ahead and exhale, bend the legs. Coming into a squat, reaching across with the one ring, maintaining the position of the other in the sky, placing the hand on the top of the thigh, looking up at the wing. Go ahead and look at your wing that's in the air. Make sure that it's not behind you and that it's in line with your shoulders. Keep on breathing. Relax. And exhale back to center. Let the arms go back to center. Pushing into the ground. Inhale. Back to the first side. Open Phoenix wings. Inhale here. Exhale, squat. Bring the arm across and rest it on the thigh of the opposite side. Inhale to look at the wing, 
open towards that wing. Exhale just to relax. And on your next exhale, go ahead and relax both hands towards center. Inhale, push into the ground, right into the second side. Inhale. Open. Beautiful. Exhale, squat. Reach across and place the hand on the thigh for support. And looking up at your wing. Look up at your wing. Up. Hold that wing up. Up here. Beautiful. And go ahead. Next exhale, relax. Inhale, coming up. One last round. Open Phoenix. Exhale, squat. Reaching across. Relaxing, placing the hand on the thigh. Don't reach too far back with the hand. You want to be able to see your hand when you look up at it. So bring your hand forward, Dad, a little bit. Nice. That's better. Keep breathing. Relax. And exhale. Come back to center. Beautiful. Relaxing. Inhale. Coming up the center. Open wings for the last side. Inhale. Exhale. Squat. And reach across. Inhale, looking at your wing. Exhale, relaxing on the tissues. And then on the next exhale, go ahead and let that wing go. Back to center. And coming up, inhaling, pressing into the ground. Beautiful. Little shoulder roll at the top here. Wonderful. How's everyone feeling? Good. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next movement. Let's see. Our turn to face the moon. So same wide length, wide length, wide stanced um, positioning. You want to connect to the ground here, and we're going to be taking it into a twist. We'll be starting with the energy ball here in the front of the Dantian. Taking a few moments to breathe. Go ahead and if you need to stretch that hip. Go ahead and do that with a few rotations. It's good. Take care of yourselves. So we're going to inhale here. And as you exhale, you're going to reach across with the bottom hand. It's going to sneak around. And you're going to turn the palm out as if you're pressing away into the corner. The bottom, the other hand sneaks behind the back and presses back behind you in the opposite directions. All right, coming back to center. Go ahead and come on back, untwist. You guys look good. So just to show you, you're basically taking this position, but you're gonna be twisted, right? This hand, bottom hand sneaking behind the back and the two hands are pressing away from each other. Beautiful, very nice. So the, both the palms should feel like they have a nice press away. Yeah. So let's do the second side here. So we're going to come up with the bottom hand this time. So inhale. This hand what used to be the bottom hand, so it's coming up. Inhale. Sneak across and press up and out. Bottom hand sneaks behind and back. A little bit of a yin-yang press in opposite direction. 
Deep arm breathing. And exhale, untwist, back to center. Meeting in the ball formation in front of the Dantian. Inhale here, exhale, starting to move across. And pressing the palms, bottom hand sneaks behind, pressing in the opposite direction. Nice, everyone looks great. Keep breathing. Next, exhale, let it go. Coming back to center, ball meets in front of the Dantian. Inhaling, coming across. Exhaling, pressing in up, opposing directions. And the gaze can look up at the top hand. Inhale. Exhale, coming back to center. And let's just sink it down all the way to the root come up out of our slight squat. How's that feeling for everyone? Let's do a little bit of a hip tap. Do a little bit of massage. A little bit of a ringing out happening now. So the third movement in these, especially in like the four movement set is the most intense of, of the set. So you start usually start with just engaging the organ and doing a light warm up movement where you're compressing and expanding gently, usually in a unidirectional fashion. The next movement usually taking a more of a twisted approach taking that basic move compression and adding angles. And then the last one goes for a, a much deeper um, access to the tissues in and around. So that should feel fairly, fairly intense because you're really creating a nice twisting motion around the organ of question in question, which is the kidneys. How's everyone doing? Would you like to do a couple more of those? So, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so normally you'd be, you know, going back to, you know, something we mentioned many years ago when you started, first started is that this is your practice, right? And so normally if you weren't following along in a class, the expectation for yourself is that you listen to what your body's asking you in that moment. So it's no, there's no set. How many do you do? It's, you know, by feel. And of course, the more repetitions, you'll get a different kind of sensation, a flow, you know, and it depends on how you approach it. You could decide that you're going to do something really intensely and really deeply for less repetitions, or you might go um, only like 60% of how much you can twist and do it many, many, many times, like for an hour, you know, that's something extreme. But um, so it depends on your approach as well, as far as how many times you do an exercise, um, depends on how what kind of way you're engaging in the activity. So I feel like I could go for a few more, but if you're feeling like it's a, little, a lot, you know, like that was some deep tissue massage, just doing those few repetitions, really consider what is your body requesting? Maybe you wanna go straight into kidney massage and smooth out that um, tissue stimulation that you just underwent. So that's something that you can ask your kidneys, how you doing, how you feeling, right? So it's giving you that option to go straight into bear turns its waist and start to explore what's happening and smoothing out that energy potential. Or if you really have that feel to do a few more um, twists going 
right in back into gazing at the moon. And maybe the variation is somewhere at a 45 degree angle. So maybe you don't go 90 degrees, maybe you go to 45 with your press, creating a less of an intense twist around the midsection and really taking a different angle. So exploring that. So I'm gonna try that out myself and see what a 45 degree turn feels like. Really coordinating with my breath, feeling the inhale, and then exhaling as I press. Inhaling back. Exhaling as I press, just going 45 degrees from side to side. And I'm not doing much of a hold this time either. I'm kind of doing a Qigong flow. So exhale, pressing. And right back to inhale, coming back to center. I'm doing an exhale press. And then inhale right back to center. Exhale pressing. Inhale center. So I'm, I'm moving across the body with that top hand. So it should be crossing from the shoulder, moving across to the side. Nice. And this feels much more nice and easy than the full twist. It's kind of like the gentle cycle on the washing machine versus like the heavy duty, right, load. Essentially, that's what we're doing, increasing the blood flow. So let's go for another couple of rounds as you feel, adjust to your own body. You might even play with where that upper hand is. Maybe it's a low moon on the horizon and you press straight out almost. And I can, instead of taking my hand all the way up, I might press lower and out. Beautiful. And then I'll come back to center. You decide where you're at. We'll all meet in a nice standing position. Do a little qu quick check-in here. Close the eyes, breathing. Oh, it feels pretty awake in that zone. So now we go back to the exercise that we started with, with the bear loosening its waist, and we'll see if we can experience any differences. So Dennis has already gotten head start for warming up the hands and creating some friction. And I'll do a little review of what we were talking about before. I'm gonna place those hands right in the soft, fleshy portion of your back, below the rib cage, above the hips, right where the kidneys reside. And we were talking about how in Qigong, we're improving our interoception, our perception and our ability to sense the tissues and actions inside of the body where we can't see. However, till we can, till we've developed that, it might be really hard to figure out what is going on with those organs exactly. So these hands placed here 
can simulate, because the kidneys are really close to the surface, we can kind of tell from the response of our fingers what's actually happening to the tissues right below the fingers. So I've placed my fingers fairly widely spread apart to kind of get um, a nice wide range of tissue um, in my sensory zone. And as I bend from one side to the other, if I bend away from say the hand that's closer to the camera here, I can see that my hand, my fingers wanna spread apart. So the tissue in the kidney zone is also most likely opening and spreading and creating this open splayed out type of formation. As I rotate around leaning back and back towards that zone, I can also sense my fingers start to close in on each other and the gap between them close. I can get a sensation from my fingers closing that also the tissues in my kidneys also compressing, the tissue spaces condensing. And from really paying attention to those changes, I can really tell, start to get a sense for even the organs experience. I want to move slow as usual. We're letting our imaginations take us below the fingers to the tissues below, checking in with what might be happening there. And maybe I feel stiffness below my fingers in comparison to how smoothly my fingers are moving closer and further. Maybe the tissue just below the finger is feeling some tightness. And in that zone, I wanna be super gentle to my kidney. And maybe take the approach that we do in other practices of spiraling in a small, more subtle way when it comes to that area being affected by my movement so that I can not startle that tissue or shock that tissue, but I want to create more nurturing trust improved blood circulation, opening of any stagnation, start creating some flow and movement in the energy rivers, and then eventually the physical rivers that they correspond with. Yeah. Definitely take care of self, take a break. That's something that looks good. So of course we don't hold our hands behind our backs normally. It's not how we stand. So it's taxing on the body as well. So doing it in small, shorter spurts, absolutely the best thing to do. Shaking out the hands, beautiful. So hopefully you get from that an idea of the approach to restoration and you know even a path to rejuvenation and recovery if you are experiencing any kidney issues um, but great for maintenance of course as well and strengthening um, so that brings us to the end of the movement part let's go into the massage let's get ourselves ready i'm gonna sit um, so that i'm not leaning over the top of this so you can feel free to do that, especially since we're going to be working on the feet. So get, go ahead and take a moment to get comfortable, gain access to the bottoms of your feet. I might grab a sip of water. I'll be right back. Okay, 
So season of water, right? Hydration. <laughs> One of the ingredients to tissue health, processing, energy processing of material, energy in material to energy within the body. Um, maintenance of pH balance in the blood and in the tissue, which is related to energy. pH being what the, the hydrogen, right? Chemical balance is actually an energy balance situation. Um, and that's what the kidneys are doing. They're bringing pH balance to the body by filtering the blood, taking out compounds that have changed the pH, putting it back. So a big part of the kidneys is not just taking it out of the body, but putting it back. So I'm having a little bit of a camera difficulty. I can't get it to tilt towards my foot. <laughs> so maybe I'll bring my foot to you. <laughs> Head of the camera to the foot. So you probably want to have your foot in a more relaxed position than I have us here. But here's the bubbling well in this zone here. And that is kidney one. We're going to do a nice little massage of it. You can use your pointer finger like I am, or you can use your thumb. Going in both directions, but generally feels more um, going with the flow of the energy to go from the inside to the front area and out in that rotation, like moving the energy up and out. I'm doing that, but whatever feels good because sometimes we use two fingers spread and open in both directions. And going with feel. And then I'm working up into the pad because that is definitely, I'm just following what my body is asking for the most part and what feels nice for this zone. So of course this pad area takes a lot. And then working into the toes. Up into the toes. Sweeping up, giving a nice squeeze. And I'm squeezing the big toe because that's fleshier a bit kind of rubbing my finger along the sides. Okay. And really generally working that pad. Doing a little pinching on the side. So the ladder channel runs down to the pinky toe. So this side in step is all related to the kidney bladder channel. So I'm kind of pinching all the way up from the heel. Maybe we can work the heel first a little bit. Getting into the middle, pressing down into it with our thumb, sweeping and then pinching from the side, kind of in this fashion. And then pinching up towards the pinky. And I sweep the whole foot. And of course, this kind of thing. And then if you can stand it, your fingernail tips, it really tickles. <laughs> it's probably better than someone else doing that to you. And then at the end, I'm pulling on my all my toes, kind of giving them a stretch. 
And I'm realizing now that I've kind of started from the bottom. I usually, I'm now remembering that we usually start with the ears at the top and work our way down. So just remembering that. Somehow I really wanted to go straight for the feet. <laughs> this is good. This feels really great. So now what I'm doing is I'm rotating this big toe. It's something that I'm really feeling called to do. Giving full circle, supporting with the other hand here, feeling, feeling the joint, kind of feeling the joint with this thumb as I'm moving it around, applying pressure where it feels good. Careful on that, maybe the opposite direction. And continuing to breathe through this. Beautiful. You can move on to the next toe even. I'm gonna put my foot back on my lap. It's a little bit of a stretch, too long of a stretch. I'm gonna overstretch my leg. So I'm repeating that kind of circular rotation with all of the toes. So feeling what feels good for you. Finishing with the pinky. And then doing some stopping at the end. From the heel all the way up. I'm kind of using both hands. From the heel all the way up. Beautiful. Okay. I'll get my sock back on that part. And we will switch to the other side. Okay. Okay. So again, Yang Chuan, bubbling well. Using the thumb to make circles there. Using both thumbs to make circles and moving up into the pad of the foot. All right. And then moving up into the toe, doing a little pinching. And then sweeping up into all the feet. Sorry, all the feet, all the toes. Feel really good. Especially feel like the sides of my toes get somehow get, I don't know. Maybe it's my shoe, I'm trying to think. I get feel a little bit more tension on the sides of my toes. Who knows, it might feel completely different to you. So just explore and see what feels good, where you need a little more extra intention, intention and attention, I said, both those things. All of the above. So then working our way to the pinky where the bladder channel flows to. 
and then starting to pinch down the side, down to the heel, and then making sure you pinch the heel. Getting the center of the heel, pressing in, making circles, nice pinching action. I think Javi uses this kind of a mouth with the hand to do some pinching. And then pinching up the side. And we were doing the sweeping. And then that ticklish nail standing. Ooh. Get some chills. Definitely wouldn't be able to let someone else do this. And then some tapping. Okay, and then we focused on the toe rotation. So I'm rotating the toe while holding with the other hand. So it's felt better doing it with my right hand on the other side, but because I'm right-handed, but now I have to switch. So I'm gripping with my right and rotating with my left hand. Well, you might be on a different foot, so I guess that doesn't matter, but makes sense to do it in a way that's comfortable for your hands and your arms. Basically, while you're massaging, giving the massage, you want to protect your own positioning and make sure that you're in, uh, sitting in a comfortable way. So toes going around in circles and, and using this hand to feel around in the joint and apply pressure where it feels good. And then move to the next toe. And make your way towards the pinky, doing every toe. I didn't do the opposite direction here. I'm gonna do a couple there. Sorry. I wonder how many people take this much time with their own feet, right? All right, and then taking that pinky too. It feels like I need to do less with the pinky right now, but I don't know. Things that you can notice. All right, and then doing some slapping at the end. And sweeping. All right. So that brings us to the top of the hour, I should say. And we didn't do our ear massage, but now my hands have been all over my feet. I would have to go wash my hands anyways. But normally I would encourage you to also take care of your ears. It usually feels really, really good to do that at the end of the set. Any questions? I stopped the recording for a second here ago. <laughs>